the job at hand, we need to change splines that are in here. These are all greasy and yucky. This one is a small 13 spline. And we're going to go to an inch and a quarter 14 spline, which they do not make in this device. This is an overhanging load adapter. We do actually a lot of mechanical design here, not just machine work. What this device does is it allows you to put either a hydraulic pump or a motor of standard specifications bolted on one side. And then on the other side, you have a standard keyway shaft. The reason for this is because your hydraulic motors and pumps, a lot of them will not take a lot of side load. And in this case, that's what we need is a side load enough to drive the pump in this case. And he's going to put a two groove V-belt pulley on here and drive this off the front of the engine. And then this will allow the hydraulic pump to not get shelled out because of having a small bearing on the front where it was originally driven off of a flexible coupling with a different mount up. Um, this particular one is not made in the size. Uh, the company says they will make you special ones, but instead of the company making him a special one at whatever price, uh, he's our customer. And we're modifying this one to do what he needs. I don't know how much the, cost, the uh, company would have charged to do that, uh, but we're setting it up for him. Probably the biggest thing with that in this case is if the company were to make a special one for him, sometimes they're not a lot of that unaffordable. Sometimes they give you pretty good prices. I don't know about this particular manufacturer, whether they give a good price or not, but the wait time gets obscene most of the time. You end up with something that's uh, normally on the shelf and you can find one somewhere in a week or two to six months, two years. And that's why most of the time, if you only want one of them, people just don't bother it. If you want a thousand of them, you can probably have it in a month. Uh, they get a lot more excited when you want multiples of something than just one. Uh, it's, and I would be too. <laughs> I mean, we do thousand orders. We do orders for 10,000 or something. Um, a lot of what I've done in the past is not going up on the internet because it's in the past. I've been doing this business for a long time and we've done a whole lot more than what we have in the last couple years. Okay, so question comes. We're not going to take this apart. And so the question came from Austin as to dialing it in. And what was your specific questions as to do we do this or do we do that? Well, it was more, do we dial in on the shaft here and leave a little gap in the chuck, or do we dial in on the outside here? Okay. Dialing in on the outside won't do us any good because we're grabbing on this part here. If we grabbed, we could grab on the outside and lock the shaft to the outside. Then we would have a problem of where to dial in on, which the best place to dial in on if we were doing that would be this output bore here. We dial in on the bore, dial in on the face. But actually, since we're going to dial on the shaft, this shaft's in pretty decent shape here, there's a little bit of a flare right at the end you can feel. So instead of worrying about the flare on that shaft though, what we're gonna do is put it in one of the grooves in the forejaw, because you have grooves in your chuck, and that way we don't have to worry about that little micro two thousandths of an inch or so that I can feel at the very edge of that. Um, if I had, and he'll be using a tapered lock for his pulley, so that's not gonna bother him either. Um, if I had a straight bore where I was doing a heat shrink or something on here, I would take a file and I would carefully pull that, that uh, burr that I can feel off. The reason why I don't is that in doing that, you take away some of the metal next to it as you guide it. Even though you're careful, it's not enough to matter in most places. Since we don't need to, I'm not gonna do it. Now, the answer as to, which is what's really cool here, we can go ahead and start putting this in the forge off, put the, the uh, shaft in there, leave just to where it's not touching or to where it lines up. Like I say, we also need to line up in one of the grooves. So pick, pick your spot there. The keyway needs to be in between two jaws. We don't want a jaw on the keyway.
You want to go in one more set of grooves? Yeah, maybe. We'll get as much shaft as we can. now yeah there we go but here is the really cool trick with this as to what we dial in on we're essentially going to dial in on the shaft right here but since we can't get to the shaft what we're going to put our indicator on is the housing and you hold the housing still and you dial it in as if you were dialing right on the shaft because the bearings rotate around and give you the reading the same as if the indicator was on the shaft. So that's the part that's really cool about this whole thing. And why I didn't want to give it to yeah. Austin yeah. without getting it on video. Yeah. Yeah. It's when you first look at a job like this, you're like, oh my God, how am I going to deal with this piece on the outside here? Well, actually that piece on the outside just makes it easier to dial in. <laughs> that's cool. So we can let Austin go ahead and you just go jaw to jaw, same as you're doing. You got to keep it. You got to keep this in the same general place. Sometimes you'll put a bar on here, grind a little flat. It's got a pretty good flat there that I don't think is going to vary that much if you just stay in the middle of that flat. Mm -hmm. If it does cause you much problem, then just clamp something onto it and hold it so it does not rotate. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be okay. Yeah. If you manage this. Yeah. If you put weight or clamp it, does that added weight weighing down on the shaft affect anything at all? In this case, no. Okay. Um, although weighting it is not going to hold it in a place. It really needs to come against something solid mm. if you're trying to get it in a place. Because you can see the indicator will move in itself a little bit off of that place because we're rolling on a non-round surface. Yeah. So there is a little bit of change you can get there. Weight won't hold it exactly in the position. Why don't you go ahead and get your side to side, make some big moves. Or two jaws to start with. Uh, first time I did something similar to this, I did it on a little uh, four-stroke opposed two-cylinder engine. We had to change the shaft on it, and that was kind of interesting. And, you know, and then you start thinking about, well, has it got oil? Is it okay? You can pull the spark plug out, leave the spark plug in. <laughs> but that's just general mechanics, uh, and it's good to know mechanics. It's good to know welding, all of these other things when you're being a job shop, one-off repair uh, machinist. And we also do production, but uh, the more interesting is a lot of the one-off stuff. Just for curiosity's sake, I want to see what it says here. You're not going to get a very uh, good view of this because that's crooked. Oh, I was like, look at it, it's perfect. It's not touching. Oh. It's okay, they can't see the tip of the indicator. One and three quarter of thousandth. But you don't, don't want to adjust it to that because that would be adjusting it to where it's running right here at the shaft. Not. There's, yeah, there's going to be a little mm -hmm. bit of... Your, and that's why I was saying here because mm -hmm. this is about the middle of where our piece we're driving is inserted. Mm. If we were needing something to be extremely precision. It's pretty close, it's within 2000s. Yeah, if we needed it to really be precision, what we do is we go ahead and check our dialing in at two different points, which we can check that just for fun. But we don't need to be that exact as far as how well this runs. But then we could pick out where our taper is in the shaft because there will be some some taper in the shaft running here. 
Okay. I'd probably go ahead and tie this thing down, actually. Just because I thought, let's go where we're closer to the center. Yeah, no. Nah. I don't like this. Just because I suggested it doesn't mean that it was the answer. Dialing it in on the outside is, it does get us where we want to be, but what I'm saying as far as just holding it, there's... Too much wobble. Yeah, there's a little... It's pretty good right there, though. Would, would like a setup jack hold that thing steady without putting too much up pressure? Hmm. Um, not necessarily. No, but we just take a piece, any piece of steel, clamp onto there, and go over to the, uh, like, far enough away, and the, hold it, uh, like put it under. the shield can move, but this one here really should be sort of light. Mm. Because you want it to be able to move. Why would you want it to move? Because if we're out of rounds, we need to see the indicator move. <sighs> I oh, guess. I see, I see. Oh, I guess. If we're not, not centered, we want it to be able to move readily. We just don't want it to rotate. It is two thousand side of round. Yeah. And that's about where we want to. Actually, maybe a little bit further over, because what we really would want is the middle of where our spline is going to be, which would be three quarters of an inch from there. Make sense? Yeah, in the middle of the splines. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really the ideal place that we want to shoot for zero. Hollywood camera crew. Oh, this says 3,000. So that would mean she wants to go in. Oh no. Oh, how about that? That's nice. Let's slick them. Okay, now we can take off all of our other stuff and you can set up to board out, which Precision we don't need to. Apparatus. We don't really need to go there.